What Taylor songs would you listen to right before breaking up with your partner? In this episode, I'm going to tell you mine. Welcome to Hits Differently. I'm Molly. That's Ryan. Today, we have episode two of Tay Therapy. If you missed our first one, Ryan told us all about her recent breakup and how the song You're Losing Me kind of made her realize that she needed to break up with her boyfriend. And we just wanted to start out by saying thank you to all of those that commented on our last video and shared so many of their own stories. It made me feel a lot less alone and I just want the space to be like a safe space for everyone and I just really appreciate this little community that we're building. If you have your own story that you'd like to share about how Taylor's music, whether it's just a specific song or an album that helped you get through something. Maybe it's something you're currently dealing with. Maybe it's something from your past. We'll have a link in the description for you to either leave us a voice memo or write us in your story so that we could potentially share it with the community in a later Tay Therapy episode. And as always, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a thing. By the way, Ryan, um, you have a little bit of a different background today. Where are you? Contrary to what it looks like, I'm not in an asylum. <laughs> With these white walls, you know, the asylum she was that they sent raised away me in. That we forgot to come and get her. <laughs> Ooh, we're entering our TTPD era. Yeah, I am at my place of work because I currently still live with the ex that we are talking about in this episode. And, you know, when I record Tay Therapy, I just want to be able to feel comfortable speaking freely. And obviously he can tune into our YouTube if he wants to know what we're talking about. But he won't. <laughs> So maybe that it's was part space. of the problem. Maybe because he didn't listen to the pod. I'm just kidding. You're like, wait, you can he can just turn it on and you're like, he won't watch. He <laughs> no. Won't. He won't unless somebody else finds it and is like, boy, watch this. And even then he might not. But he also got my approval, to be fair. I'm not out here like slandering and or outing him, just in case anyone was wondering. Got the approval months ago, even though he's probably forgotten. But yeah, I am in the uh it's called the privacy zone room. There's no one here. Me and the custodians cleaners i hear them vacuuming actually right now so that's where i am might you know spice it up a little bit maybe start decorating and making it a little fun in here and just like doing whatever i want because there's nobody else here bring in the cruel summer poster bring in the rep vinyl just start placing things i did you. think about it even though there's like no show i just get a nail and i start hammering in the wall and i'm like ooh, this room has potential there are no cameras in here so it's a safe space anyway that's where i am this is where you'll find me on Tay Therapy until I move out. <laughs> so like we were just talking about, we got so many great comments on the last Tay Therapy episode, and there was one that inspired this episode. Yeah, someone said, Clean is a song that some days I cannot listen to, and then described how much they can relate to it in their own life. And I was like, man, like there's definitely Taylor songs that I haven't been able to listen to because I wasn't ready to face my own bullshit. Pre-breakup, that was definitely a time where I was avoiding Taylor's music, was keeping all of it shut out because I didn't want to feel the feelings. It made me think about the day before my breakup, I finally started listening to Taylor again. It had been like a few weeks of no music and no Taylor, which was a dark, a dark period dark age. I feel like Taylor is like, for you, it's like that friend that you know they're going to kind of give you that dose of reality. I tend to be that friend for most of my friends. <laughs> they're like, when they want the truth, they'd go to me. If they they want to be filled in like someone to support their delusions they'll go to another friend i know i'm always telling molly i'm like i didn't tell you about this because i knew what you would say and i <laughs> wasn't ready to hear it right now and you know i need to get better at just listening you know that's my tay therapy that i need to take away <laughs> sometimes you should just ask your friends do you want advice or do you just want to be heard i can be it's better true. at that my point is i think you would treat taylor in the same way it's like this friend that you're like i don't want to open up my emotions to you right now because I'm going to relate to this too hard and I know it's a problem. I I'm like, I don't need Taylor good. judging me and being like, girl, what are you doing? We, we've done talked about this now for over a decade about these men <laughs> and she's like, I've been through it before. I get it. But like, you know, what are you doing? You're like, so let's start with a song that, you know, was on a vault, the vault of an album that came out of a decade ago. Yeah, it was just where my brain went. I was like, I want something fun. I want a sad bop. Um, I literally had forgotten at that time about the 1989 vault tracks. Like, you know, like her discography is so big that you're hooked on like one album or one 
like section or whatever it is. And then you're like, oh, that's right. 1989 Volt tracks exist. And I want to go listen to them right now. And so, yeah, I started with them because they were also like sad bops. And I knew it would be like, all right, we're testing it out. We're dipping the toe in the water to feel how it feels to like feel the emotions. Yeah, let's and, let's feel yeah. a feeling. Let's see how it feels. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. Nothing crazy. I was also driving while doing all of this. So I had many hours to kill because I was driving home from somewhere else. So I listened to Say Don't Go, Now That We Don't Talk, and Is It Over Now? And Now That We Don't Talk was really the one that resonated because it's like a blend of post-breakup, what's it going to be like, which makes it really sad. And like con- thinking about talking to your friends and being like, you know, they're saying it's for the best and all of this and then you know but then trying to find solace in the fact that it's going to be a little freeing too eventually because there's some things that you might not do anymore that you don't have to you don't have to like acid rock or big yachts being on big yachts or you know whatever relatable version of that is for your own life yeah ryan no longer has to listen to acid rock or be on a mega yacht so i'm very pumped for you (laughs) So everything on my own version of like, how can I change those lyrics, but it's still rhyme. And I feel like that's what everyone should do. It's like a fun little like make it your own version on that yeah yeah the line from that song that i've always felt like was such good storytelling from taylor is the did you get anxious though on the way home i guess i'll never ever know now that we don't talk because i think everyone can relate to being close to someone whether it's a friendship or a relationship they you're close with someone and you know their innermost thoughts about everything and then all of a sudden one day you don't anymore and it's like i'm thinking of you i'm thinking of what you might be thinking about this thing but i'll never actually know how you feel about it because we are not that close anymore and that's hard to reconcile sometimes especially in the beginning and don't text them you're like let me just mm." no did you get anxious though delete 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 (laughs) hey how are you Mm? i also like the two lines that she talks about like the mom ones like so i call my mom and she said that it was for the best and then later on it's like so i call my mom she said to get it off my chest Mm -hmm. and it's like so simple but i don't know it's just like the progression of like I would equate it to like if I was like calling you you start with being like it's for the best all right she's still talking about it she's still messed up over it it's like all right get it off your chest clearly you haven't come to terms with the fact that this is for the best but convincing yourself while feeling oh like we don't talk anymore and like I don't know what you're feeling or thinking or doing there's so much it's such a short song that I was sleeping on in the beginning and was like, you know, and I'm like, ooh. I feel like the shortness of the song is intentional. I'm pretty sure it's like her shortest song out of her entire discography. And it it feels so intentional that it's like, now that we don't talk, Mm -hmm. it's like, that's why it's short. Because we don't talk anymore. There's not a whole lot left to say. I'm just left wondering. (sighs) I never thought of it that way. I know it's so punchy. Yeah, it's it says everything in like a little a little basket. So yeah, I I really related to that one the most out of the vault tracks that I was listening to. And then because I hadn't listened to Taylor for a minute, I think I also was like, what's some Taylor songs I just really want to hear that I really like and gravitate towards. So it's like starting with the 1989 vault tracks. And then next I was like, I really like the Speak Now vault tracks. And as you can tell, like we're starting like getting a little bit more sad and like a little bit less sad bop. Castle's Crumbling. More just sad. Yeah. Just sad. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Castle's Crumbling is not a sad bop. It's just sad. So that's what I listen to next. That song is just so cathartic. What Taylor's writing Castle's Crumbling about is not a breakup, right? It's more about the public perception of her and her relationship with fame. But I feel like you probably could relate to it in that moment because you're just like, my world feels like it's falling apart. These songs were literally, this is the order I was listening to to them on the drive so I wasn't even like fully listening to the words by the time we were at Castle's Crumbling I was like this is just like the melody is so sad Mm -hmm. and watch all my bridges burn to the ground and you don't want to know me I'll just let you down and then like I don't want to know me now like you said it's like it's not even about a breakup but like you could twist it in a way and be like well it's kind of relatable for sure and then Foolish One which I feel the closest to this one because I mean not only did we have throwback like a fool which one segment OG viewers will know what we're talking about, about me being the foolish one. Foolish one. (laughs) I often feel like the foolish one of like, girl, what are you doing? Like, Stop Sitting checking your mailbox for confessions of love. For confessions of love. <laughs> that ain't never gonna, never gonna come. come. <laughs> Dude. 
You're thinking he's the one. You should have been walking out. out. <laughs> and like, I feel like this song's more like about a situationship or like your classic, like a guy that's like leading you on and like won't commit to you. And you're like, he's going to tell me, he's going to profess his love tomorrow. He's going to do it. And then he doesn't. And then next thing you know, he's like proposed to this other girl and you're like, great. Like, <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, that wasn't, that was not my experience but again <laughs> once you hit that bridge i always like feel it on a deep level now i'm sliding down the wall with my head in my hand saying like how could i not see the signs like oh you haven't written me or called but goodbye screaming in the silence and the voices in my head are telling me why ryan's partner may or may not have had some communication issues so yeah you haven't written me or called <laughs> like, right it's a little I, deep <laughs> again you can really take taylor her songs and like t like you could have like the literal version if you know like her lore and her backstory or like the obvious of again this being like about a situation ship or you can just take it and be like what does this mean to me and that's my favorite like kind of way to listen to her music is when I'm in that headspace of like how what does this mean to me and like how am I relating to this I'm just over there being like oh, foolish one you know <laughs> now I'm sliding down the wall <laughs> The funny thing about this that just occurred to me, we talked about this in the last episode, like the timing of when You're Losing Me was released. Mm. And that was May of 2023. Mm -hmm. We'll speak now. Taylor's version was released that July. And at that time, we heard Foolish One and we were like, this is your song. Oh my God, One you're right. And three months later, here we are. You're right, because I was sleeping on the Speak Now vault tracks for a minute. And then all of a sudden, I know you were. That was the first one I woke up to. And I was like, dang, Foolish One's kind of a vibe. And you're like, I know. And I was like, dang, <laughs> Foolish One's kind of relatable. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain songs that I would hear and think of you, and I'm like, I can't tell her. She's got to come to that in her own time. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was one of them. You are very good at being like, hey, the song is uh, exactly like this guy or this situation or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, you're right. Can't unsee it. And the voices say, you are not the exception. You'll never learn your lesson when you think, all right, I'm dating this guy, and it's going to be different. And, you know, I'm gonna be the spark for change or whatever it is that you tell yourself that you're gonna be the momentum changer and you know often you are wrong and yeah you're not the exception to be clear this wasn't really about you right like you can sit here and say like oh, I'm not the exception but I feel like that paints the wrong picture because when you say you're not the exception I feel like in a way that's somehow placing fault on you like oh, I couldn't be the one to change him at the end of the day you shouldn't have to be like I wanted to be your exception I wanted to be the one that that changed you because like he has to want to change himself yes it's very true thank you Molly for the reality <laughs> check it's like you get lost in it and you're like all right Taylor like we went a little too far also when the speak now vault tracks came out I remember people saying man and how my life could have been different if Taylor released Foolish One instead of like Enchanted. Oh my God. <laughs> like... Right? I know. It's like you have that level of it where you're like, I'm so in love. And spoiler, um, this relationship, Enchanted, was my vibe with this person in the beginning and as I it didn't is, even realize that I didn't mean to compare the okay, two okay well maybe not no it was more so fearless funny. I'm sorry fearless definitely like the running his hands through his hair and like whatever yeah. I think it was sparks fly I you're feel right. like it was sparks fly you're right it was kiss sparks me fly. on the side you're right take away the pain you're right yeah. Molly knows I was like yeah enchanted doesn't yeah Sparks yeah. Fly I, was the I have vibe. All your pivotal Taylor songs. <laughs> in my brain. You're like, oh, she's coming around to this one. All right. Well, because you had gone through a breakup, you know. We'll we'll talk about this in another episode. But like for a while, you had really related to the red breakup songs, and then when mm. you started this relationship, you were very Speak Now happy girl. <laughs> so. I know, and I wasn't super privy to the OG Speak Now. So when like Taylor's version came out. I was one of those people who was experiencing it not for the first time but it felt that way of like oh new. now I'm absorbing it differently and so now I'm that person yeah I was listening to Sparks Fly and I'm like oh my god <laughs> I literally remember texting you oh my god this lyric hits like this is me <laughs> and it's like 
Now I'm over here being like, foolish one. Foolish one. <laughs> Foolish one, Sparks Fly belongs on the denial playlist. <laughs> no, I don't know if it does. I don't know what. I don't know what no, to leave Sparks, with her. Sparks Fly is fine. We can leave that. Yeah, with a Sparks Fly just is yeah. what it is. It's just not your song anymore. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's not denial. It's just clearly not Foolish One's like you know counterpart. But but yeah, that bridge hits really hard, Foolish One, and I really like it. And she's just really emotional. Maybe I'll finally learn my lesson. Only time will tell. <laughs> so then, obviously, at this point, it's like we started sad. We're vibing, blah, blah, blah. Now we're getting a little more ch- like realistic with ourselves, listen- listening to Foolish One. And it's like, I don't even know where my brain went. And again, this is like my authentic. Like, this is just like where I was going on Spotify. And I was like, you know, I want to get deep. I'm ready. I'm ready to feel and cry and whatever. So I turned on You're Losing Me, which we talk about in our last episode. We go in depth about that. But you know, if I'm at You're Losing Me now after the songs we just mentioned, um, yeah, it's definitely like, okay, I'm ready to take a hard left at this mental, (laughs) you know, hype up progress of like, where are we going? Oh, that's where we're going. Okay. And so then you listen to You're Losing Me and it's like, great. All right. Now I'm like crying and I'm feeling the feelings and I'm like warmed up. And then I ended this like however long span of songs in the car with, uh, you know, classic uh, Tolerate It, which we're going to go into depth in another episode because that song deserves all of the lyrical breakdowns. But I've always related to that song on a very deep level, past relationship more so, but it's just such a gut-wrenching bridge, just like you're losing me, where once again, you're in this relationship, you're talking about an impending thing and you're like going through it and you're like, you know, like what would happen if I left, if I just like did it? In this case of the this progression of songs, it was the ultimate hype up of like, what would you do if I actually just like did the thing and we broke up believe me i could do it also i feel like tolerate it is so closely at least to me like related to you're losing me like she talks about Mm. i mean i feel like there's like a mini songs like the great war and like a lot of other songs that feel like they could all be this overarching storyline of of how she gets to you're losing me right yeah, yeah. like because obviously Tolerate it came out like before you're losing me. And so you're like, dang, girl, the bridge being like, oh, just like ramps and it's like break free and leave us in ruins. Took the dagger in me and removed it. Gain the weight of you, then lose it. Believe me, I could do it. It's so you're losing me coded. Wow. If it's all in my head, tell me how. Tell me I got it wrong somehow. Yeah. Yeah. All the phases of like, you're mad, you're bargaining, you're like, please, like, tell me this is not true. Tell me you're not tolerating my presence and you're not taking me for granted. And this is all in my head. And I'm going to say all of this and you're going to be, you know, you're going to come running back and make it all better. You know what song I feel like should be added into this this arc that we're forming with her songs? I think that Bejeweled is an interesting one to throw in there because Bejeweled is kind of like a threat. And I know it's not a sad song like these, but it's like, don't put me in the basement when I want the penthouse of your heart. Best believe I'm still Bejeweled. Like I can still make this whole place shimmer. It's like, hey, look at me. Are you paying attention? Like, I'm trying to tell you something and you're not getting it. So I'm about to go out. Okay. I'm about to get out of this relationship. It's like the flip side, like her happier bop of like the, these versions of these lyrics. It's funny that you say that because I, when doing the research for this episode, I found an article that was giving like Taylor's like top breakup songs of all time. And Bejeweled fell into the honorable mentions section technically aren't breakup songs but they're breakup adjacent or have lines that'll speak to someone who just left a relationship and for bejeweled it says like finally like you're over it your heart feels whole again you've remembered you're defined by the things that you love whatever happens in the past and you have your confidence back so yeah i feel like bejeweled is a sleeper i feel like you had like your tastes of bejeweled when we were in europe it was kind of again a turning point in the relationship oh this is how it feels to like not be living with this cloud over me every single day. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is what it feels like to be laughing with my friends again. It's true. And you wore your bejeweled outfit when we went to the Aeros tour, so I'm just saying. <laughs> it's true. I feel like I relate more to vigilante, or that's where I want to like relate to. I don't relate to it right now, but that's where a commenter said that they were in their vigilante 
phase and that's just where i want to be i just want to dress for revenge <laughs> um you know so that was my musical journey before i broke up with my boyfriend and i know it's a little disjointed and random and if you have a list of songs that you listen to of taylor's before you had to make a hard decision whether that was a breakup leaving a job just making a hard decision and needed to feel the confidence that taylor always gives us let us know in the comments. The confidence and the validation that you're not alone in what you're feeling. I feel like that's what Taylor's music gives all of us. Whether you're happy, sad, in between, whatever. So we want to hear your Tay therapy stories. How has her music affected you in these moments? Like Ryan said, if you would like to submit your story to us, that link will be in the description below. You can either leave us a voice memo or you can write a submission to us and and we might potentially share that story on a future episode of Tay Therapy. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>